Well, as a, uh, first thing on my mind is obviously a really disappointing loss. All losses are disappointing, and especially in February. But the way this one played out, uh, them setting an all-time record, 15 out of 22 threes, a team that has played 25, 30 games and shot 31% from three, uh, too much to overcome. And then the second half was disappointing when we started out and they just dug in, got an 18-point lead. We talk about runs a lot. I'm, I'm really pleased you'll be able to write about the fantastic run we had to cut it from 18 to three. But just a little bit too much behind. We cut it to three, minute and a half to go, gave ourselves a chance. And as much as I hate to say it, we might have cut our throats at the foul line. Five or six big misses when we really had the game and maybe even the momentum turning. But we couldn't get the lead. We couldn't tie it up. Uh, we had a couple opportunities. And I got to tell you, they've done a great job. I, I alluded to this before the game without a couple of their key guys. But I got to tell you, the veterans out there, the four transfers from Texas, Washington, Oklahoma State, and JUCO, they're mature kids, along with Marvell, who well may be the best player in the West. It's five pretty good players, intelligent players, tough players, and veteran players. They've been around the block. Um, fortunately, we don't have to wait a week. We got three days. We go up to Colorado State. Uh, it's a very meaningful game to a lot of people in our state. So hopefully we'll uh, we'll be ready for the for the ball game. And uh, and uh, I got a sneaking suspicion the, the crowd will be ready for the pokes. Larry, I know you watched the film, but did you feel like they just knocked down shots? Did you feel like your defense, at least at, at times, was pretty good and contested? Or I thought our defense was incredibly improved against the drive incredibly improved against some of their stagger screens and we did a really good job on the defensive glass i thought they made some tough threes to be honest but if it goes in one coach is clapping and acting a fool and the other coach is not clapping and not acting a fool and 15 out of 22 went right through the hole how tough is it when you set a scheme in your preparation to do something and then when they're on a good shooting team and then they well, shoot like that you know it happens uh, it happens often probably in a lot of sports, and you, you got to go to a plan B. We planned on playing a little more zone, but we went to zone early, and the transfer from Washington knocked in two. Um, so uh, that changed some things in that first half. Uh, but like I said, I, it, you know, if I saw quit, if I saw, if I saw our guys talking while the game's going on in the stands, if I saw our guys acting a fool, um, it would really be bothersome. I still see a team that is growing. I still see a team with 12 out of 13 returning. Certainly Josh didn't have one of his better performances until down the home stretch. But you know what? Uh, you don't make excuses. You plant your feet, you take a stand, and you jump into the next one. That's what you talk to your team about. That's what you need to do as a coach. You talked about Josh you know, having a Pretty solid second half. It's kind of the same thing at Boise last week, where I think it was two points, and then he proved. Is anything did anything change with Josh that you saw, self or even from the teams, you know, defending him? Or what, what have you noticed? I guess these. Yeah, I, I would say more of the teams defending him. I mean, we got better players in this league. We got quicker feet in this league. We got ball screen plays for Josh where he's drawn to. Now he can kick it to Jason, and Jason can knock some in. But one thing's for sure, they don't want Josh Adams getting to the hole, and he tried. He probably took, if we had it statted right, we'd have to check with the officials, who I'm not allowed to comment on. But we we statted at 17 drives, and he went to the line once. You know that's that's disappointing. But you know what? He's got to drive better to get fouled more often. Was that the difference in the second half where he was able to drive a little bit? We more? got in the open floor, like he stole the ball once. Uh, I don't, you know, when their five guys were playing defense, and he tried to put it on the deck. He drove and he tried to create contact, and apparently he just didn't create enough contact. You mentioned the you know, Marvell's preseason player of the year, great player, but was he almost on just another level in that first half? He, he, he was incredible, I thought, the whole game. You know, it, what, what my eyes continue to see, which I talked about earlier, wasn't just the points that you guys rave about. It's also the seven assists and the three turnovers. It's really hard to be a big time scorer and be able to have a high amount of assists and a low amount of turnovers. And, and uh, Marvell, again, seven assists, three turnovers. Josh Adams, eight assists, 
three turnovers, two pretty good offensive players trying to lead their team. One team gets four more points, the other goes home with their tails behind their uh, legs. Long tail. Hey, you try to get Hayden some minutes. He played about four in the first half, and then yeah, he was right. No, just we, we didn't want to put him in harm's way. He's a tough kid. He gave it a good try, and we'd have loved to use him because he had played back to back pretty good games. But he was dragging it, and uh, we thought at that point, oh, let's hold him out till Saturday. Maybe he can give us a little bit more, two and a half more days rest. We talked a lot about the last few weeks of just uh, J Mac shooting the ball really well, but tonight is A3 is the second best in school history. What did you see from him? Well, he, he does so many things well. And, you know, uh, I talked about him and raved about him. I love him to death. He represents everything, you know, when teams score 79 in my first 42 years of coaching, that doesn't really mirror my DNA. But I get it because if you watch us, we probably took 10 shots tonight, maybe 12 shots tonight in the first seven seconds of the clock. You know, we bring it, we pop it in the corner, Gorski, boom, Jason, boom. That's how we play. Well, when we play that way, there's going to be a lot more possessions and it's a lot tougher to keep points down. That kills me, but I got to tell you, he represents at both ends of the floor everything that I would want a poke to represent. It happened to go in for him. It just happened to go in a little more often for the bad guys.